What's going on y'all? Coach J Law B Ball here. We're gonna teach you the difference between a push cross and an undercross and why we use either one in a certain situation. Let's get to it. Before we get into this video, I need you guys to subscribe and turn on those notifications. So one of the big diff biggest difference between a push cross and an undercross is a push cross is gonna be over the top of our leg versus an undercross being underneath our leg. And a lot of coaches out there will say, hey, you either need to do one or the other, but that is not true. Okay, you guys need to understand when to use a push cross versus when to use a drop cross or an under the knee cross. And each one of these is really important in becoming a proficient player. You need to be able to do both. So first off, if I'm attacking with space and going downhill and I have separation, probably about three or four feet of space uh, between myself and my defender, I'm probably gonna go into a push cross because it gives me the opportunity to protect the basketball as well as be able to get to that space quickly. And the reason why it gives us a quicker crossover, a quicker change of direction, is because it allows for foot freedom. And foot freedom means that when I push that ball out, push the ball across my frame, I can bring that ball side foot with me to get into that new space. Versus a drop cross, cross that's underneath the knee, I have to cross over and wait for the ball to release from my hand before I take that step over my frame. So huge difference, that put, uh, drop cross or the underneath cross, you have to wait for the ball to cross before we step. And with the push cross, we can just go right away. So you guys watch like Russell Westbrook attack downhill. He's attacking with space, boom. And as soon as he decides to go, he'll just push the ball across his belt and look to get downhill right away, making it explosive. Now if we want to sell a move, like if I sell a shift, or get to that like Allen Iverson style crossover where I step and dig into it and really get my defender to move. I'm playing with the weight or the shift of my defender. So whenever I do that, I'm probably a little bit closer. I'm loading that weight up. Instead of me planting here and pushing across my frame, which keep in mind the defenders here, they go to move and they have this dig hand low. If I push cross from this loaded position, I'm probably going to get that ball stolen. But if I get to that dig, get my defender to shift, and now I drop the cross low, it gives me the opportunity to get the ball underneath their hand while keeping that tighter quarters, that tighter space with the defender in front of me. So it's a great way for us to be able to get past our defender and utilize the move, be successful with the crossover by going to that drop cross when we're a little bit closer to the defense. So we've already discussed about the protection aspect of using a push cross and an under cross, okay, but it's really important that we understand how to keep that drop cross or the under cross really strong and protected when we have to use it. So if I have that defender really close to my frame and I decide to cross the ball low, I'm sure a lot of you guys have felt or have gotten the ball stolen because we leave that ball vulnerable from, to that defender. So as soon as that crossover is made, they take that outside hand and just pop it right out, go down on the other end for a wide open layup. Now it's really important that we do two things really well. One, on those crossovers, we allow that release hand to continue through to space. So I don't wanna cross and then get to this position. I wanna cross and let that hand go through so that way I can use it as like a, a, a guard or a shield from that defender's offhand. The second is making sure that we allow that ball to float, to manipulate outside of our frame. So as I cross and bring that release hand through, I need to, be, need to be able to pocket and manipulate that ball wide, so that way as my defender decides to reach with that wide hand, I can keep the ball away from their body, and then I can get into that new space accordingly. So that manipulation gives us the opportunity to control that next dribble that we take, whether it's a counter again, whether it's a punch to get into a step back, whether it's a hard dribble to get to the basket, 
it gives us an opportunity to direct that location of the next dribble. We're gonna do a lot and see a lot of those when we get into our live examples. When we get into a push cross, the manipulation is still extremely important, but as we talked about before, that push cross allowing for foot freedom gives us that automatic shield between us and our defender. So as I push ball across, boom, my off arm is that shield, my inside leg is that shield, and now as that defender decides to put his hand into my frame, I'm using my whole body to kind of break that space and keep the ball protected. This also gives me an opportunity to really load up that next dribble. So out of push crosses, you will notice, like Russell Westbrook and a lot of players that do it are great at downhill drives, you'll notice how strong that next dribble is. So as soon as that push cross occurs, they get through space, and that next dribble that they take is through the elbow, it's real direct, and it allows them to continue that momentum downhill or into a swing step or into a step back but it gives them that strong direction and strong intent to attack. Let's go through a couple of reps, actually a few reps on the drop crosses versus push crosses so that you guys can see the difference between the two and how they can be useful in your game. Understanding situations is extremely important, so that way we know exactly when to apply, whether a push cross or an under cross, or that drop cross. So, say for instance, we get a sideline pick and roll. So we have our big man setting us a screen here, facing the sideline, and our defender hears screen, screen right, screen right. So as soon as we skip, they decide to cut off that line. Now. If that defender tries to cut off that line of me using the screen, but they give me space to operate, they have like a, a couple feet of space between us, then I know right away that I'm gonna push across so that way I can get downhill and into space immediately. Now, if the screener's defender, or sorry, if the screener comes to set a screen and my defender hears that screen right, screen right, screen right, but as soon as they jump, instead of jumping back to space, they jump and try to jam me, now I know I can't do the push cross because that would be really vulnerable and easy for them to steal. So what I have to do is I have to realize, okay, if I'm crossing the ball over, I need to drop underneath to keep it outside of their reach. Now, not every time would it be a push, would it be an under cross. Sometimes we need to use our between the legs and our behind the backs if that defender is really close to our frame. But if that defender is about a foot away, foot and a half away, and there's that really tight area of space where we can drop underneath, I can drop underneath outside of their hand, outside of their reach. So understanding the defender's space between us and the situation, what the situation calls for, is really important. Now say I have the ball in the outside hand. Same situation, the screener's coming to set a sideline pick and roll. My defender is kind of relaxed. If I see that they're relaxed and I have space between them, I'm going to notice it right away and say, I'm not even going to wait for that screener to come all the way set. I'm going to make them set it earlier, and I'm just going to push cross and go. Just an instant read for me, be able, for me to be able to say, okay, that's me. I'm gone right away using the screen because you weren't paying attention. So understand when to take advantage of the defender, understand when to set them up, and make sure we understand what cross to use once that setup occurs. So that's just for the setup. Once we attack over the screen, now we get the opportunity to use either a push cross or a drop cross again. So if I turn corner and that big man is sagging, giving me ample space to attack in either direction, then that push cross is probably gonna happen so that way I can get downhill and continue my momentum. 
But if they come off and they're jamming a little bit and give me a very, very small window to snake or attack this gap, then I'm probably gonna drop cross, get that ball underneath my knee so that way I can attack downhill. It also plays to my advantage to drop low because that defender is gonna be positioned a little bit higher. Maybe they're taller, maybe their hands can't get down that low, so I'm gonna to play to my advantage, which is to push that bar, drop that ball underneath my knee. So you'll notice as I go through these reps, I'm gonna mix it up based off my momentum, based off of my vision of where that defender is. If they're sagging back, I'm pushing. If they aren't, I'm dropping so I can get into space controlled, protected, and efficiently. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and turn on those notifications. Also, fire away any questions you have. I'm gonna be there answering them personally, and I wanna help you guys on their path to success. Let's get it.